This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. No. No. Y'all, y'all, y- this just is stop. a sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to DBL. Happy Tuesday, ladies. Ladies, I'm too low. Hey, we got new chairs. We, got new chairs. we feel like the yeah. captain of the enterprise. Engage. <laughs> okay. I just got here, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, let me get it fixed up and uh, let's get to it, shall we? Good kickoff, tour. <laughs> Anytime. Welcome to DBL. Trekkies Some Trekkies stars like are dishing their various parenting style, dishing on their various parenting styles, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, who says he was a strict parent. While on the View, he shared a story about teaching his daughter Catherine a lesson. Let's watch. Catherine would leave her shoes there by the fireplace, and I would say to her, Catherine, if you leave your shoes there one more time and don't put it in the mudroom or in your room, I'm going to throw them in the fireplace. Yes. And she would say, yeah, 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 Red Daddy. Sure enough, the next time she left it there, I took the shoes and threw them in the fire. <laughs> you know, and they, they burned and she was crying, but she never left the shoes there again. Yes. That was it. So those are the kind of things they used to do, you yeah. know, to discipline them. Yes. But now with the grandchildren, no, they can do anything they want. <laughs> it makes no That's difference. Right. We have a Did great time. <laughs> He's Arnold yeah. also praised Catherine's husband, Chris Pratt, for being a strict parent and said Catherine is a fantastic mother because she combines the rules he and his ex-wife, Maria Shriver, passed on to her. Yeah, y'all are full of crap, let me tell you, okay? Speaking as a child who was terrorized by my father, the way that these grandchildren are, are doted on, <laughs> no. and I tell him all the time, I'm like, I don't know who you are. So Roosevelt treats the grandchildren oh different than he treats God. treated you. Yes. <laughs> what is he with the grandchildren? They have broken him. He like I will walk into a room and and let that baby have whatever that baby <laughs> wants, and, that, and I'm like, who? Are you? It's what grandchildren That's like do. Role Where the did you come from? No, Erica, I'm going to defend no, Roosevelt. I'm, I'm not defending him. That is the role of the grandparent. Um, as far as Arnold Schwarzenegger go, I've threatened this to Sophie, and I've yet to hold my boundary, and I want to. Not the fire. I think that might visual might be extreme, but do you, Arnold Schwarzenegger, I love you, and I think he's raised some great kids. However, with Sophie, I do have a bin that we take to go get to, to donate. And I say, if you don't pick up your toys, whatever's left out will go in that donation bin. And have you done that? No, I have not. Okay. <laughs> but she always does pick them up last minute. But if she leaves them out, will I follow through and place them in the donation bin? I don't know. I hope I do. Be an I Arnold. Wanna, I want to follow through. Be an Arnold. Jeff? We give, Jordan's good at like getting rid of their toys. Like you don't play with this. Yes, I do. And she just throws away. They don't, they don't care. They forget about it. You what about if it's a toy they, they love care. and they leave it out? Sometimes you got to give, give tough love. Yep. Okay. I'm all about that. We've been talking about it lately. We had someone on. Tough love is considered bullying now. I don't share my, number one, I don't share my parenting style. I will share it, but I don't give others advice. That's that's my first rule. You do you. You want to throw your kids' toys away? Go ahead. You want whatever you want to do, do it. Reese Witherspoon also <laughs> incorporates tough love in her parenting style on a podcast. Reese shared the importance of letting her kids fail in life, something I do too, because I'm a bully. She said when her daughter Ava was in third grade, she wanted to join the basketball team, but it didn't go so well. Let's listen. She had her last game of the season and she went home and laid down on the bed and started to cry and she's like, I didn't score anything. I didn't score one goal and and everybody scored goals this entire season. I didn't score any goals. And I said, you know what also, maybe you're not good at basketball. She was like, what? what? Can you tell me I'm not good at something? I was like, it's actually really important to learn what you're not good at. Also very important. Yeah, I just got into uh, Pinky Cole's book, I Hope You Fail. It came out today. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm uh, already on chapter two. It's really good. But just the idea, I mean, these are still lessons that we as adults need to get comfortable with learning. The idea that we are going to fail, even when we're at a, a different rung or echelon in our lives. And then those Failures just become more public, but hopefully you have the grit in order to withstand trying over and having a comeback. So, yeah, I think it is important to let 
kids know that they're not going to always win everything because it sets up unrealistic expectations for your future. It gives them humility and as Jeff always says, these are the biggest learning experiences. And Sophie's very competitive, surprise, surprise. Yeah. And I, every time that she doesn't achieve what she sets in her mind, I tell her, Sophie, you just don't have it down yet. Now, if it does come to be something that she's not naturally good at, I am already setting that tone. We haven't had the conversation yet, but I always say mommy's not great at art. I'm not. Mommy's not great at singing. I'm not. So if there becomes a time where she's like, I really want to be a professional singer and she ain't a good singer, I might have to tell her. <laughs> You're like <Sophie> mommy. <laughs> there's other things you can be great at, but I think failure is the best lesson of all. It's just how you present it to your child. Yeah, it is for me anyway. I'll, yep. I'll share a quick story about what happened this weekend because Lawson's in football and he's got his good moments and, yep. and of course his bad moments, right? And those are the moments where he cries a little bit and you got to yes. pull him aside and talk. So he has, like I said, great games and the game before he had was a great game. In this game, kind of was dragging his feet around, chewing on his mouthpiece. The play would start, you know, the guy would go around and the coach was telling him what to, he didn't have a good game. And so he started crying at the end, right? And telling me, and I went to go hug him on the sidelines and he pushed my head, which is not, which is not, which is a no-no. <laughs> Roosevelt would be like, oh no, you did. Okay? <laughs> So I did not like that, and you, I, I w did my own like little pouty thing, right? But I'm like, I got to get a control of myself, right? Because I have problems controlling my emotions. And when we were in the car ride home, he knew what he did was wrong, right? And I said, Lawson, I don't care what you do out there. I'll cry because whatever. I, go, I don't care what you do out there. You be a good teammate. You pick your kids up. There's this little kid who never touched the ball. He ran across the middle and just it went in his arms that magical moment. And he ran for a touchdown. And the dad was like, you could tell him like he was crying on the sidelines. I'm like, that little kid comes to every practice. And this is his first chance to shine. And you're crying because you didn't do good. You go and cheer your teammates on. You go and show them that you're a good teammate. You're not, your team won. You're not going to do good all the time. And that was something I had to t teach him. The next day he had a football game with a lesser, you know, competitive group. There was a little kid who barely walked. He was helping him, put him in there. The parent pulled him aside and goes, hey, listen, I, wanted, I want you to know that you're doing a good job parenting. And you, my friend, are doing a great job with being a good teammate. Amen. And I started, like, crying. I go, did you hear that? And he goes, I can't wait to tell mommy about all that. Are and you I'm like, joking? And it's just those little no. things about, like, you got to let them fail. you got to let them do their pouty thing. you got to get control of your emotions Amen. before you pass Amen, it on to Jeff. them. And it was one day later, I'm like, oh, he does listen. You're such a good father. You know? Aww. And my he's little such a good one, kid. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing, my, Jeff. Oh, well, thank I you. I know. It made me you. cry the next day because and I was, why so, did that I was so proud of him. Because of the failure. Right. Right, and he still did a couple, he cried a couple times when he fell the second game, but he did fall on his flag and it hurt. But I'm like, hey, you gotta control your emotions. This is it, buddy, this is what we talked Look about. Look at them crying. But it was, a, it was such a, it was such a good moment. Yeah, all right, we gotta go. Proud of you, but, uh, Jeff. That's a great yeah. parenting moment. Proud yeah. of you, buddy. But that second one, I probably won't have that luck. So one out of two is a thing. <laughs> Coming up, I do. You know. <laughs> We're looking at some of the weird answers Gwyneth Paltrow gave during a Vogue interview, including what she uses as a doorstop stop and our interview with the female bodybuilder in her 60s how she's inspiring others to get fit at any age hello okay i like it I like it. Why can't Jeff be that nice? Oh. Jeff is sweet. She oh. said, why can't Jeff be that nice? That's so the fact nice. that Jeff said that he needs to control his own yeah. emotions in yeah, order regulate. to parent yeah. is what I struggle with. So my whole battle with parenting is I get triggered by the screaming, by the yelling, by the fighting. I mean, that's all natural fight or flight responses that adults have. And for me to just take a moment, take some calm breath so I can parent with intent um, has changed my parenting game. So for Jeff to say that really hit home because that's what I'm working on as yeah. a parent. So thank you for that. You know, you have to, you have to know, again, I'm talking to mostly parents out there, but I'm still learning, like I said, every day. I fail as a parent, not my kids fail. I fail as a parent sometimes. And I have to learn, he doesn't know this yet. They don't know this yet. So I have to teach them what is going on. They don't understand the notion of failing or falling or why didn't I do good on every single play. They're, they're just, they're, they're learning what life is and it's a good. Sophie's having trouble with and that's breaking my heart. But so Lawson was struggling last year, okay. right? And then he's in this program where he needs extra help, yeah. which I had a problem yeah. with too. I'm like, yeah. what are you saying? You know, so, so, so it's a whole different thing, but he's getting extra help. 
And now we teach him, like, we sit down with him and teach him spelling every day. And he's doing really good. Good to know. Because yeah. Sophie is currently in that situation right now. Yeah. So good awesome. to know. And it's, again, I tell him the same thing. I go, listen, buddy, I don't care if you don't get 100 on your test. Yeah. I don't care if you don't score touchdowns. If you try your yeah. hardest, I don't care. Totally. I don't care what you get. I don't care if you score but a touchdown. It Totally, but when he, he still didn't score a touchdown, I'm not. Well, the, I'm saying yeah, the second yeah, game. Yeah. But I go, buddy, I don't care that you score, didn't score a touchdown. You taught that kid a lesson. That's huh? more. Welcome back to DBL. Gwyneth Paltrow gives us a little insight into her life. She answered Vogue magazine 73 questions while at her house in the Hamptons. Let's take a look. What's your biggest vice? My one alcoholic drink a week. What's something you used to do that makes you cringe now? Sing in public. Favorite Coldplay song? Life is for living. Can you sing a little bit of it? But life is for living, we all know. And I ain't gonna learn. I don't remember the words. Oh, oh, what a beautiful voice. <laughs> that was incredible. And what a beautiful Academy Award. <laughs> My doorstop. It works perfectly. So Gwyneth's rep told Variety she was joking about using her Oscar as a doorstop and says she usually keeps it at her house in New York. Now, before Tori goes off on a tangent, I actually think the doorstop with the Oscar is pretty funny. Like, if I had an Oscar... And I might use Are it for that. Are you joking? I think because people will see it all the time. Do you know time. how many people work that hard why to give it, her that Why does it have to be on a mantle with a spotlight on it? It doesn't. Everyone don't don't put it, it in the day. dirt. She was the, kidding. I, yeah, it was, it was a, a joke. joke. Like if I, had an Oscar, <laughs> if I won an Emmy, I'd put it in my bathroom that company uses. I agree with you, but yeah. don't put it in the dirt or make it a joke. I all mean, right, go off for it. All right, off. I'm just saying, you always ask me why I can't stand Gwyneth. This. This is why I can't stand. Why? What did she do? I'm not gonna sing in public. And then, oh, the Oscars is a great doorstop. She's trying too hard. It's not funny. It's not cute. It's not clever. You're irritating. Can't both be true where she doesn't want to sing in public, but then again. She just sang? But she didn't want to make him feel awkward. He asked her specifically to sing. So you say, I'm not gonna sing. Yeah, I just said I can't sing. But as an actor, when you do a bit, you always come from a place of her yes, bits right? are not okay to me. <laughs> the Oscar as a doorstop I, is just. You didn't in, like that bit? It's insulting. I think, you know what? I think you're blinded by the Gwyneth. I well, shit. Yes. Doorstop I think you would like that. Let's call a yeah. thing if, a thing. This has been going on for this is our seventh season. <laughs> she uh, sucks. Lori <laughs> has a thing about Gwyneth Paltrow. Now, I do have my theories that I have constructed over the past she does years. and they're probably right and I and it, it is what it is I have some people who trigger me it's based right. on my proximity to how much I may be like them that's right and, <laughs> and she I, thinks I'm like Gwyneth and I get it there, oh. there is a, there's yeah. a fundamental growing up, growing up well there off is a, mm -hmm. there is something there I'm not saying the whole thing fair I'm just saying sometimes we see people who mirror parts of ourselves that we may feel like we're we uncomfortable like. right. with or want to work in on ourselves. And so then we see it and it triggers us. What? And then we go on a tangent about okay. it. And I'm just saying, because I'm not saying you're special in that regard. Right, right. I'm not trying to pick on you. I'm right. telling you I do the same thing, but that is your thing with Gwyneth. Wow, well, let me say this. Deep. If we, I, she said it to me before, and it's so deep. It's so deep that it's shallow again, because I move all the way back. But here's my question. If we won an Emmy, God, we're going to win an Emmy. We poo, are poo, 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 poo. You think I'd stick it in my garden? It was a bit. She can dust it off. It was a bit. Is it funny? Yeah. Was the bit funny? I don't know. I if it think was so. Hilarious, was a little insulting. Yeah, it's a door. No, it's not insulting. People you can do whatever you want with it. Do you know it. how important that is to a lot of people that ask her? Well, you got to do. You got to brace it like uh, it's a statue in no, your garden. You don't oh, stick it. Thank you. Academy. Don't stick it in your hydrangeas, huh? I, but everyone's uh. gonna see it. I think it's pretty. F I, I like it. Okay. I think it's funny. I don't like it. I, I thought it was. Fun. I thought it was good. She's yeah. a Gwyneth Paltrow. No. What are you gonna do with your? Uh, you know what? I'm gonna Emmy. put it in the bathroom so when people go, they get to take pictures with it. So it's you fine. can steal my idea. I've <laughs> already had that idea, and you kind of stole that from me, so it's okay. Uh, okay. What are you gonna do with your other one? Put it in the garden? Yeah. Let it grow roses.
Interesting. Yeah, we're getting in I didn't know that they could grow roses, but okay. <laughs> 30 to hard out. Listen. Look, you know what I do? I do, I do, I do, I do. Okay. Our interview with a female bodybuilder in her 60s. She shares her secret to staying fit at any age. The U.S. House of Representatives needs a new leader after far-right Republican members successfully led an effort to remove Kevin McCarthy from the speakership. One candidate that's been floated, former President Donald Trump. The speaker doesn't actually have to be an elected member of the House, just be chosen by a majority of the representatives. But some people have claimed that the House's own rules would bar Trump from taking the position because he's been indicted. So let's verify. Is it against House rules for someone under indictment to be speaker? Our sources, the House Ethics Committee, the House Rulebook, the House GOP Conference Rules, and the Congressional Research Service. Rule 13, Section 10B of the current House rules say, quote, a member who has been indicted for a felony for which a sentence of two or more years imprisonment may be imposed should resign from any committees and should step aside from any party caucus or conference leadership position. Trump's four indictments contain numerous felony charges that carry sentences of two years or longer. And the speaker is certainly a leadership position. House Republicans also have an almost identical rule for their own conference, Rule 26. So we can verify, yes, it is against House rules for someone under indictment to be speaker. However, House rules are not laws. They don't come with the weight of a court. They're self-enforced. Violations of House rules can be investigated by the Ethics Committee, but that committee doesn't have much power beyond issuing warning letters and sometimes fines. Anything stronger has to be voted on by the full House, but those options are also limited. With a majority, the House can formally reprimand or censure a member, or with a two-thirds supermajority, expel them. But of course, if a majority of representatives vote to install Trump as speaker in the first place, they're unlikely to turn around and vote to expel him for violating the rule. With your Verify, I'm Casey Decker. Welcome back. 61-year-old Cheryl Grant wants you to know that age is a gift, not a limit. And earlier she told us what it takes to rock the stage in bedazzled bikinis and stiletto heels. Cheryl Grant, thank you. Yes. So happy to be here today. Looking Hello. great. You look Honor. insanely wonderful. <laughs> Cheryl, <laughs> thank you, <Honor>. amazing. <laughs> you were crowned Miss Olympia in 2017 when you yes. were 55 years old. Why did you want to get into bodybuilder shape and compete in these shows, Miss Cheryl? Um, really quickly, I really um, stumbled upon bodybuilding. I really got into it to transform my body. But what the gift that came for me as I transformed my mind, I was in corporate America and I kept hitting what most would call a glass ceiling. But for women of color, it is a brick ceiling. Mm -hmm. And just kept trying to hit that and unfortunately um i decided well i can't change that but i can change myself and so i went on this fitness journey and i did just that wow sure i love this next part because it really hits home with me you say it's important to focus on mental health for physical health why your mental state of mind is everything. I created a platform called FIT. FIT standing for faith, intuition, and tenacity. It's your ability to believe in the poss impossible, learning how to trust yourself, and then the tenacity to just go get it done. The type of work that I'm doing in body transformation, you can't just do it by deciding. I mean, you can go to the gym, and yes, you can work out, and maybe you might receive some form of transformation, but true transformation starts in your mind first, and then it will transform into your body. I am a firm believer that you have to be mentally fit first. That's the only way that I could have sustained and achieved the title of Miss Olympia mm. is through mental fitness. Wow. I love how you talk about the mind transformation because I tell people that was a piece that when I competed changed my entire life. The setting of the goal and actually following through to attain, achieve that goal, such an aesthetic mm -hmm. way is transformative. What do you tell people who think that they're too old to start their mental and physical journey. Okay, yours truly is 61 and mm. about to be 62 in a couple of months. And I became Miss Olympia at 55. 
If you tell yourself yes, or if you tell yourself no, either way you're right, you get to choose. Mm. The one thing I want to say is that if you want to live the most optimal life at any age, you need to start now by taking care of your body. When you take care of your mind and your body, you have a greater percentage chance of living a life that is beyond phenomenal. I'm going to tell you something. We're all headed towards aging. It's inevitable. My grandfather used to tell me either you die young or you get old. <laughs> how do you do it and how do you do it gracefully? And I am a champion for that. Yes. Absolutely. Like, I, I don't know. We're I blown need to away hear like here. I, I know. I, like, I want to go play a football game yeah. after talking to you. Like, <laughs> seriously, like, you are so inspiring. And I love that you tackled the mental aspect of it. So let me ask you on behalf of all our, of our viewers, how does one become mentally fit? And what kind of resources did you do you provide on your website for this? Well, one of the things I've done that I'm really excited about is through my journey of transformation is created a platform that's truly about taking care of yourself first, your mental, and I give you the tools and resources. But once you're mentally fit, it's very important that you put yourself in an environment where you can grow and sustain it. And I've cultivated that. I created something called the C4 Matrix. It's simple but powerful. Communication creates connection, connection creates collaboration, and collaboration creates community. With those things, there's a, a, pri a hidden C, which is change, and that's true transformation. I have a platform that has the resources, no matter if you're in your 20s, your 30s, or your 40s, or your 50s, to help meet you where you are. We're all different. We all have different needs along this life's journey, and I'm here to get you fit no matter where you are in life. Wow. Cheryl, you have such a gift just speaking Dang. i mean you do every single person in the studio is now Jeez. motivated cheryl thank you for joining us on dbl today visit cherylgrant.com to learn more about cheryl and her fit for life platform thank you again cheryl congrats on all we'll your success you thank you right. thank right you. back as always thanks you At multiple Walgreens stores nationwide, pharmacists walking off the job. Not for higher pay, they say, but for health and safety reasons. We're so busy running ourselves ragged. It's like a marathon. And seeing, you know, customer safety be at risk as well as our own. Tammy, who asked us not to use her full name, works as a pharmacist technician at a busy Walgreens in Minnesota. She says she joined at least 10 of her colleagues who did not report for work on Monday. It's very scary, and we're actually getting to the point where it looks like, we, I don't know, like how much farther we can push ourselves. In addition to filling and verifying prescriptions, Tammy and other Walgreens employees say pharmacists and support staff are also managing a high volume of calls, working with insurance companies, and administering a growing number of vaccines. In a statement, Walgreens acknowledges that the last few years have required an unprecedented effort from our team members and that it has been a very challenging time. The second largest retail pharmacy also says it's engaged and listening to the concerns raised by some of its team members and is committed to ensuring that the entire pharmacy team has the support and resources necessary. Last month, CVS pharmacy customers in Kansas City were impacted when workers there also walked off the job to protest over similar staffing concerns. They understand the risks that are being posed to the community that, with these uh, demands on them, so they don't want to make a mistake. According to USA Today, CVS corporate staff flew to Kansas City to meet with organizers and agreed to improve working conditions and patient safety. I don't think a lot of customers understand that we are trying to do our best for them. Walgreens organizers say they don't want to disrupt patient care, but need to take a stand, a sentiment some customers can appreciate. You know, I support workers' rights, and, you know, a little inconvenience for me is worth it. Several Verify viewers forwarded us this text message that says seven women died after inhaling poisoned perfume for a sample they got in the mail. Our viewers want to know if it's real. So... Let's verify. Our sources are Glen Eagles Hospital in Malaysia, the DC Metropolitan Police Department, and a search of social media archives. The warning in this text claims to come from Glen Eagles Hospital, but there's no hospital in the US with that name, although there is one in Malaysia. Glen Eagles Hospital has debunked this viral warning several times, including in this 2013 statement on Facebook saying, we have never admitted or treated such patients and have never been aware of such incidences.
We would also like to categorically state that this email did not originate from our hospital. Three years later, the warning resurfaced on WhatsApp, prompting Glenn Eagles to issue another statement calling it a hoax that has been around since 2001. This warning is one of several similar hoaxes that are attributed to the Office of Risk Management at the Metropolitan Police Department in Washington, D.C. A police spokesperson tells us the text wasn't sent from them and noted that the Office of Risk Management isn't located at the address listed on the text. So, no, seven women did not die after inhaling poisoned perfume samples. The warning is a hoax. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Welcome back. We've got some great products from our friends at Morning Save. Check them out. Steph, what do you have for us today? First up, we've got the Bib Home Premium Six Piece Rayon from Bamboo Sheet Set with Ooh. sure grip strap. Oh, I love the strap. This set is made of super soft 2000 thread count microfiber and bamboo blend. Ooh. Normally, this is between $99 to $139. No, I can't. sheets are way too expensive. However, we have it. So are you ready, Tori? Yeah, give $29.99 to $39.99. That is saving you guys 71%. Now check out this, Tori, how cute. It is the Philips Sonicare Diamond Clean Recharge toothbrush with an app. The sensor technology helps give personalized feedback about your brushing habits in the app. What? So you get two weeks of regular use from a single charge. Normally, this is $270. We've got it for $99.99. Uh. That saving 63%. This is the premier toothbrush in the world Absolutely. and we have it at such a good price. Tori, next today we've got the two-pack Royal Borough Cotton Grommeted Window Panels. Uh. These panels are made out of 100% cotton, the heavy lined cloth that will help darken your room, add privacy and save energy. Love. Normally these are between $59 to $69. Okay. We have got them for just $24.99 for two panels. So that's saving you guys 64%. And I love this color. It's I know, so light. I do too. Very neutral. This is very Steph color. And last but not least today, we have got the 24-pack Laundry by Shelly Sigal Women's Low Cut Sock. So they're designed to stay snug at your ankle, and they withstand tons of use and washing. Normally, this is $96. Nope. We've got, are you ready, Tori? Okay. 24 pairs of socks for $20. That's saving 79%. Oh my gosh, you're set for life. Head on over to MorningSave.com to snag these amazing deals at the lowest prices, or you can even scan the QR code on screen to take you directly to these products on Morning Save's website. Thank you so much, Steph. Here's a question, I hope it's not sexist because it's women. Does anyone know their thread count to their sheets? Yes. Yes. Really? It's always over 500. Oh, for sure. Yes. I don't know. Mom. I hope to get up to 1,000 because it's a, that's a good goal. I don't know. Sometimes 1,000 doesn't feel like, yeah. I know. I agree. Yeah. I agree. It, it depends. Bamboo? All right. See you Bamboo tomorrow. Great. It is oh, good for sweating. <laughs>